and it is my pleasure now to call upon our first speaker this evening, tall, handsome, dark, Texan. <laughs> so they walk further, they drag their feet. In the end, <laughs> they are on the atrial story where their apartment was. They throw them up. So they quickly run to the door. Oh my goodness. My goodness. You know what happened? No keys. <laughs> what happened to the keys? The keys were on the 20th story in the back. Um, you used the microphone. I, I was impressed with the use of the microphone. You, you slid from the left to the right at different parts. A uh, bit of popping. You're popping. You, you're a bit too close to the microphone. So you, you're rushing your words a bit. You're popping, which everyone gets distracted. Liked and interested. It wasn't a lesson wrapped in a story. It was, more, oh, it was very empowering, I think, for the audience that you actually wrapped a, you wrapped a story around a question, which is actually a lot more powerful sometimes than a lesson because that allows everyone in the audience to try and come up with an answer which is unique to them. So who, is, who did you think your audience was going to be tonight? Our members. Yeah. And have a look around the room. Uh, how are members dressed? A mixture? Yeah, a mixture. All very well, of course. <laughs> now, <laughs> I would just suggest that if you're going to be a professional speaker, look yeah. like a professional speaker. Mm -hmm. Tell us more. What are you going to talk about this For evening? For fun, I speak to the patients. <laughs> Is that what you're going to talk about this evening? No. What are you going to talk about this evening? My observation of the human race. Over to you. How many is? We are one independence. While he's scratching. One way to interpret is he's thinking what to say next. The other is interpretation, he's obviously bluffing. Could be either one. Now for a fellow to get piles there, the fellow who sat must have a hole in this part <laughs> and must be infected the piles. And the fellow sitting there must be having a hole at the exactly same place <laughs> and his skin must be broken. Which you know is impossible. With that, I end my presentation. <laughs> uh, just stand up for a second. Now, let me come from personal style. I think you're dressed fantastically, but you're not at the office, so you need to lose the pen right away. Look at your pen and your, paper, your hand. Your pen in your yeah, pocket? Yeah. yeah, I see it too. So does everybody else. Is, uh, the tone of the voice is about the same from beginning to end. So although you were projecting yourself and your stories quite well, it was a little. It started well, but then it, it didn't have it didn't have a climax to it. It didn't have a high point to it. And I I, I I like your energy. Your energy was excellent. The way you communicated your story, I enjoyed it, and I liked the way that you enjoyed what you were doing up there. Good good evening, ladies and gentlemen. All right, my name is Iman, abbreviation for Emanuela. We spend ten percent of the time planning. 90% of the time worrying. So, either case, get us to nowhere. Am I right? Okay. Um, what is living in the moment? Living in the moment. Um, and when you're up on stage with a, no a number of different speakers, you've got to finish on time because otherwise you're stealing somebody else's stage. And if you're selling product at the end, you're stealing from somebody's ability to sell their product because they have planned their speech and the audience isn't going to wait till midnight because everybody went over by 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, and what I think that you should ditch tomorrow, ditch tomorrow is those PowerPoint slides. I mean, this is the stuff that you buy from $3 from a motivational shop, you know, the Mighty Minds type thing with the eagle flying and <laughs> some kind of motivator. It's cheesy, it's really corny. And you think about it. You, many times you turned around to read from it too, and this is one of the greatest sins of PowerPoint. You don't use PowerPoint to read from it, mm -hmm. like a crutch. You use PowerPoint to, to illustrate a point or wrap ideas around a funny picture, an image, or something that's very perfect. Dress. Uh, could you stand up for just a moment? First of all, I want to acknowledge you on your dress. You look fantastic. The challenge is you've been working in that outfit all day, haven't you? No. Okay. <laughs> stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Come on. Stand up. Okay. Just turn around. Just turn around. This outfit you couldn't use on the road because this outfit crushes. And you can't see it from the back, but the audience can. There's a lot of wrinkles in this thing. And people will look at the wrinkles, and they should be looking at you. You're beautiful. You've got a great stature. You dress professionally, but that outfit doesn't jump for me. 
And the whole time I'm looking at him, look at this 75 wrinkles in the back of you. And I think, did she drive around Singapore all day like a taxi cab driver in this outfit? Big Tim said, you can't go, okay, ah, uh, when you go to your speak, use the plan pause. If you're gonna turn to your PowerPoint presentation, turn and let your body take everyone with you. Own this platform. When you step up here, you own it. This is your room, this is your time, own it, use it, and just give them 100% of you, okay? You'll be fantastic. All right, Don. Now for our fourth, we're still on time, so not too bad. Uh, I'd like to invite up to the front here, Ms. Anne. Hello. There's this very excellent documentary, The Blue Planet, by David Attenborough. In the Antarctic, the only people, only animals living on the iceberg is a polar bear. And the penguins come to visit once a year. Happy little things, penguins. Chatter, chatter, lots of noise, lots of movement. And one day, Mr. Polar Bear decides to have a people idea. And he gets his polar bear goons and go into an exhilarating life where we choose how we wish to live and not how we've been told. Thank you. How many of you felt a bit moved by that? Yes. I thought I did. I thought I did. Uh, I love the way you spent almost, well, you, you overran just by a bit, but you spent the entire eight minutes basically telling short, vivid, memorable little stories supporting just one single point. And I think that's great because in most one hour presentations, the most you can dance around are maybe three key points, even sometimes even one, and because that's what people will remember. Um, I'm exhausted. Uh, <laughs> passion is not always shouting. But the passion was coming out as shouting. And that can disengage audience members if they think they're being shouted at. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I've got a very good friend, Sheila Fielding in Australia, and there would be so much common ground that you would have with her in terms of your style. By the way, Good, bad, ugly, good. Your shoes are fantastic, I might add. Let me tell you, those are great. But uh, bring your UK forward. Um, slow start, very animated, liked all that stuff. The I was a little over the stories by story two. I was a bit lost there myself. What happened to my fifth? Yeah. Chicken up? No, it's outside. It's outside. <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> well, here he comes. Ooh. engagement was excellent. I'll, I'll give it that. But here's the thing. I, I can't vote for that presentation because there's no second act. Um, I, I, like, I like to leave a little crack in the door. And that is uh, whether there actually could be, contrary to what Tim thinks, a part two to this. I'm a huge talker. What if I can't talk and that makes my body so different and that makes my hands so different and my face much more expressive? So I, I do think it's important to watch people who don't talk um, and see, and we were voicing everything for him. It was charades, right? And we were making ourselves comfortable by giving a voice to this guy who looked murderous mm. and we made we softened him by saying what we wanted him to be saying right so I, I think it was to me very effective and thought-provoking